All right, Kate, I have graduated to fresh garlic. You have graduated to fresh garlic, you yeah. grown up you. Oh, you know. I'm surprised it took so long. Yeah, well, I, don't know, I was a little bit, I was a little bit, a little bit scared. Previously, we talked about buying pre minced garlic. Yeah, and I had said that I felt like it was too sweet. I think. Okay. And then I switched to garlic powder, and I said, like, "Okay, this is this is better. This is more the garlic kind of flavor that I would expect." And then I was at Price Chopper the other day, and there was the garlic there, and I looked at the price. I was like, "That's actually a lot less than I thought it was." Let's buy some garlic. And then uh, started looking up, okay, what's the best way to prepare this? Yeah. You so know? do you have a garlic press? No, I'm just slicing it thin. Slicing it thin. Okay. Slicing it thin. And that takes a, obviously it takes some more time, but. Uh, but the flavor is worth it. Flavor is worth it. And yeah? okay. learn that the longer you cook it, the sweeter it becomes, I think. Okay. Kind of okay. makes sense now. Um, based off nothing, I have no research on this. I'm sure there's some kind of preservatives that comes in the pre-mixed or the pre-minced stuff. It would have to be, right? But I wouldn't think it'd be sugar. I would think it'd be like sodium. But Yeah, sure. But yeah. that doesn't mean that necessarily the sweet that might develop, I don't know, from being cut early, except like the longer it's exposed, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. Once again, not knowing what I'm talking about. I, I will say I'm I'm proud of you because that stuff kind of intimidates me. Oh, the fresh garlic? Yeah. And that sticks on your fingers there a little bit. Well, I just, I've never, I didn't grow up with fresh garlic. I don't know how to do it. And what if you do it wrong? Then you've bought it for nothing. Like I've never bought anything that has gone to waste. For goodness sakes. <laughs> Yeah, I've slowly gotten better at trying more things while cooking. It started before, in the, in the before times. In the before bit. times. So I was, mm-hmm. uh, at that point, I think I've talked before about how, oh, man, I have all these empty calories from uh, Guinness each day or, what I, or whatever. Mm-hmm. I was like, okay, the way I can counter this is by eating healthy or you know, paying attention to calories in. And then I thought, oh, if I cook everything at home, I'm going to have far more control over what all ends up in me, you know. And same thing right. with if you're to buy, you know, processed food, you know, food that's cooked ahead of time. There's going to be some additive, or like we mentioned, potentially just some sodium or something to mm-hmm. give it a better shelf life. And then the current times arrived, uh, these in-between times, as I like to say, because the after mm-hmm. times are nearly here, I feel like. Anyway, uh, which really drove me to prepare 99.9 percent of my own food and uh yesterday actually i was thinking after uh, you know i was eating and i was like man this is good this turned out great um, Yay! i was thinking isn't that great yeah so i was thinking hey if i retire <laughs> if <laughs> when i retire uh, i could see getting better and better at uh, preparing my own stuff you know get more adventurous Maybe invest in a nice kitchen or something. I don't know. Oh, look at you. I was watching my cousin make risotto the other day, and I just thought, it's so good. I can do this. It's pre- it looks like there's minimal ingredients. I can do this. And then she just stood there and stirred it the whole time, and I'm like, yeah, I don't know if I could do that because <laughs> I would have to walk away or distraction or something. So. Oh, there's lots of stirring involved? Yeah. I just yeah. I want to get I want to get braver. Can't you hire a machine to do that for you, though? Can you? <laughs> I don't know. Can't like a kitchen aid over the stove? Potentially. Oh, hmm. Okay. I bet you we could figure it out. Well, there will be a robot one day to do that. <laughs> Stir while cooking. I bet you we could figure it out. Yeah. Just uh, duct tape. Uh, just duct tape. Duct tape your way to success. Duck it. Duck it. Yeah, yeah. surely you could find a way to get a stirring apparatus over. The uh the thing to start well you're you're just stirring from time to time right it's like making no I think you're constantly stirring oh okay well yeah never mind different food item then I know let's switch <laughs> learn something new Kate now you say you watched her or uh... I was in the kitchen with her while she was making it oh okay she wasn't live streaming it no <laughs> okay yeah I don't think I have the guts I don't think I have the guts to do any live streaming or even dead streaming of my cooking. 
You know, why well, don't you have the guts? Oh, I'm so self conscious. I'll worry him. You know, oh. I'll get the internet will judge me. Because I was thinking it might be a good tool for you to start doing your videos or your live stream or whatever, and then in a year later, when you've you know graduated even further, you can look back at oh my gosh, look what I did the first time. Blah blah blah. Maybe it's not for the internet. Maybe it's for you. It's your uh, game footage. Well, Go back watching the footage. This is what happened when I did this. Oh, my game footage is if I'm uh, in the NFL or right, right. R- run a basketball team or something. Mondays we spend looking at film. I do like the idea of being a coach of a, of a, of a sport, but I don't really know enough of actual X's and O's to be able to do anything like that. But uh, um, yeah, I could <laughs> play some amateur chef, I guess. Yeah. So. My oldest, Finley, is uh, in a basketball tournament right now, and she is turning the corner on this basketball thing. Like she's come a long, long way and she's so tall and she keeps growing. And it's like, she's trying to figure out how to get her body to do what she wants her body to do. But they were in a huddle and the coach always has the board out with the X's and the O's on there. And uh, she told her one time, she's like, yeah, but it's a lot harder once you're out on the court. And so (laughs) last week at the game, she's like, uh, coach, can you get your board out? I need to see those X's and O's. I was like, oh, she's really getting it. She's really getting it, Matt. Sorry, I'm I'm, I'm t- too just obsessed with my own cooking abilities. To... Okay, so I do huh. think you should start watching film of yourself. Yeah, or, yeah. so far the only film I've really watched is Chef Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> That's motivational. <laughs> if you watch Chef Gordon Ramsay, he's, he's got his videos where he's basically talking to the camera, you know? Okay. You know, on how to how to make stuff. And then, yeah, he's got the videos where he's yelling at other people. Okay. So in stuff. his videos, usually he's just talking to the camera, not well, saying. Well, the ones I end up watching typically. Don't screw it up, you idiot. I think YouTube has figured out that I'll sit there and watch Kitchen Nightmares. <laughs> you know? Yeah. He kind of figures, oh, yes, yes. The uh, one, in fact, just last night, some Chef Gordon Ramsay popped up on there. Hmm coincidence hmm. and especially i hadn't watched one in a while but the the bit where the it, like the couple that was yelling at customers that one got kind of oh. got briefly viral i'm not sure if you ever saw that one which one gosh uh the woman and her husband and whenever someone was like you know what this food just kind of uh, you curse at them and tell them to get them out you know oh geez there's uh, so many videos like that right now and I used to like watching those videos because I'm like, these people are crazy. And I'm like, oh, yeah. these people are crazy. I'm not as into them as I used to be. That might be because mm-hmm. I just binge watched a bunch of Kitchen Nightmares for a period of time years ago, a few years ago. Maybe got my fill. Kind of kind of get the point. Got it full. It's like, okay, yes, people, well, there's lots of raw things. And there's lots of things that should have been thrown away from the walk-in refrigerator a long time ago. Mm-hmm. Expiration dates are just suggestions, right? <laughs> Turns out. I did figure out Chipotle sour cream, though. You figured out Chipotle sour cream, as in Chipotle the restaurant, their take on sour Chipotle cream? Chipotle the restaurant. Very good question, Matt, because when you do Google that, it gives you like a flavorful sour cream. But I wanted the sour cream that's like the restaurant Chipotle, where it's real creamy. It's like, you know, oh, what did you do? compare it to one time? A river? Well, yeah, the, when you see people. <laughs> Instead of a blob, it's a river. Well, yeah, that's how people, certain people request it. They're like, I, I right. need, uh, can I get uh, eight ounces of sour cream? Mm-hmm. And can I get a side of that too? Yes. Thanks. Thanks. Yes. I didn't realize that there was anything extra special. That I hadn't oh, yeah. put that together. It's, it's, it's more runny than you would otherwise get. It pours. Yeah, it pours versus like a uh, plop. <laughs> you know, when you scoop sour cream, it goes, it goes yeah. yeah. Huh. I always just figured that was because it was at a lower temperature once it was on the uh, the prep table there at Chipotle than in the nope. fr- like more gelatinous in the fridge. You get, you get hot sour cream at Chipotle. Yeah. yeah. It's been out for 10 hours. All right. So uh, do you have any tips for the listener on how to achieve a Chipotle restaurant style Sour cream. So I took the sour cream out of the tub. I put it in a mixing bowl. And they said to uh, get your hand mixer out, but don't overdo it because it'll make it watery. And you don't want watery. So instead of putting both beaters on, I just did one beater 
and it was perfect. You don't need to go very much at all either. And it was perfect. Does it help if you wear a beater? Maybe. Only if it's white. Black doesn't count. Black doesn't count. Okay. No. Yeah. Black's too dressy. It's too fancy. Yeah, I need to have just a, a little hint of stain there uh, below the armpit. Yeah. Ew. <laughs> so. I You said stain. I pictured barbecue, and then you went armpit. I'm like, huh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, you're right. Well, yeah, you'd have the barbecue stain in the, the on the stomach part of the beater. Yeah. Maybe that's more of a white t-shirt. So you're not adding anything to it. You're just, nope. you just beat it a little bit. I'm just beating it. Just hmm. mixing, mixing, mixing. Interesting. Yep. Do you feel yep. like you dialed it in exactly or do you have some nuance to learn or beat it less next time, beat it more next time? No, I think I did it just right. No one wants to be defeated? <laughs> no one wants to be. Yeah, I I think if I would have done it more, it would have been runny. But I also think the trick was doing hmm. one versus two of the beaters. One beater instead of two beater. Mm-hmm. What's that? What's that mean again? That you don't overdo it. Okay, so you beat, 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 beat like that amount of beating. Yep. Eh, scrape the sides a little bit. As, as opposed to beat, 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 beat. Beat a little. How many seconds do you think you're beating? Less than thirty. Less than 30 seconds. For the amount that I put in the bowl, yeah, less than 30. Okay. So there you go. Good tip from Kate on how to prepare your sour cream. So it's like the consistency of the sour cream at Chipotle restaurants. I know. It's going to be light, life-changing in our house, Matt. Yeah. Life-changing. Yeah. Well, that's a good tip, especially that's a lot easier than having to worry about tracking down additional ingredients or... Right. Or driving to Chipotle and getting like eight sides of sour cream. Yeah. <laughs> right. Sounds a lot more... Affordable than that. Although sour cream's free, but typically with purchase. I don't know if you can just go into Chipotle and say, uh, give me uh, one of those soft drink cups full of sour cream, please. Well, we always do the, what's it called? The pickup. Like I order on the app and then I just pick it up. And then I walk to the register and ask for a side of sour cream. So if you could act like you're picking up something. Oh, that's true. I mean, I'm just saying you could try it. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, you could just keep a, one bag of like a Chipotle bag around. Yeah. Oh, even better. And then put some uh, dummy food items in there. So it looks like it's heavy. And then walk up to the counter. Yeah. Like, oh, you know what? I forgot to get sour cream. And then and they're like, oh, okay. Sure. Hmm. Well, there's a good, another good tip. Okay. How to, <laughs> how to swipe sour cream from Chipotle. Yeah. See? Oh. We've got so many good tips on this show. Uh, either buy <laughs> sour cream and beat it. Or fake that you bought something at Chipotle and ask and go, oh, you, I forgot to get sour cream. Could you hook me up? I need eight, please. Thank you. Yeah, I need a lot more than that. Thanks. <laughs> Fill it to the top. <laughs> Don't go short on me. All right. So this has been another edition of Matt and Kate's Cooking Corner. I'm trying to think, is there anything else that I've learned about cooking recently? I, I know that I add the garlic last now to the, uh, to the sauteed vegetables. Oh, really? You don't do it with like your butter? No. At the beginning? Well, that's the other thing I learned when I was reading was that the uh, if you're using butter, it's going to cook a lot quicker. So uh, keep, your eye, keep your eye on that. Okay. No, so uh, like onions take a lot longer to cook than okay. garlic does. So basically I go, well, I've been using frozen broccoli, but even with fresh broccoli, you want to start that at the same time that I use up my uh, kind of, not quite diced, but sliced a uh, portobello uh, mushroom. Mm. Throw that in there with the broccoli. And then you add the onion. Then you add the garlic. And then throw some spinach on there. You know, get that spinach just uh, soft, you know. Mm-hmm. And then remove. And then you make your eggs. And then you plop your eggs on top of the vegetable mix, uh, which is then sitting on a bed of most likely... Steel cut oats, but possibly rice. And then, of course, black beans on the side. On the side. You don't mix them in? Uh, it depends if they're fresh. Depends if uh, I freshly made them or not. Okay. If it's rice, yeah, there's a... Every once in a while, I'll actually mix the rice in with the vegetables inside the, uh, the skillet, you know? Yeah. And then I'll add the black beans in there to cook them up. But the black beans seem to be kind of... I don't know watery when they're just mixed in with the vegetables if that makes sense yeah the rice does a good job absorbing some of that so it's a bit easier to have uh the black beans more often than not on the side nice so uh, sounds good there you go oh yeah those veggies 
My mouth watered. Slicing up that fresh gar- fresh garlic, I do feel like I've unlocked a new level. You ever feel like that where you've unlocked a new <laughs> level in life, Kate? Yes, absolutely. I'm trying to think if there's anything else recently I feel like I've unlocked a new level on. I'm trying to hold on to those levels because I feel like I've learned a lot about organizing, but I haven't oh, yeah. put it fully into use because I'm boxing things. So it's like when I get to the house, if I can remember, <laughs> I know how to organize these things so that it works easier and doesn't, you know, get to be overwhelming. So, yeah, so you've been developing strategies. Now, back to our sports analogies from earlier, you have had some preseason games, kind of like not full games, you know, but you're right. starting for one quarter of the game, right? Because you've done some organizing ahead of the move. I have done some. Yeah, yeah. It's just I'm worried about remembering. So I have several emails in my account uh, from myself that are just um, YouTube videos. And I've, you know, the title of the email is, you know, linen closet. So I can remember. Okay, this is the linen closet video that I wanted to try to remember how she does the sheets. And yeah, so you file those emails into a folder or are you just counting on searching your email box for them later? I'm counting on not reading them. So when I search my unread emails, I can find all the, I should put them in a folder though. You're right. That's where exactly what I should do. Yeah. Folders are great. What do you want? Folders are good. What are you using for your personal email? Gmail. Gmail. Yeah, me too. Mostly. Yeah. I do have a, an account with uh, the old iCloud also that I use for some stuff, but the uh, yeah, Gmail is a good way to <laughs> find a message from 2005. You know? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I was uh, having a big problem with uh, Google Photo and Gmail and the OneDrive last night that I was going crazy like, come on, why? I thought Gmail is supposed to be super easy. <laughs> Yeah, if you don't know what you're searching for, it's not that helpful, I feel. But if you mm. do know what you're searching for and you know it should be there and it's like not refreshing like it should, that's super frustrating. Like my photos were in my phone, but I couldn't get them to go from my phone to the computer. And I was trying to send a large file in OneDrive and finally it went, but it was just obnoxious, obnoxious. Like it wouldn't refresh. Yeah, that's the worst. I haven't even been on my personal Facebook. No, congratulations. I know. How's that feeling? Not bad. I I did Instagram last night before bed entirely too long, but it wasn't Facebook, so. Yeah, tell you what, Instagram actually, I find it can still be kind of uh, addicting, you know, where it's like, uh, oh gosh, I've spent a lot of time on this. Yeah. But not in a depressing way, unless The Rock is using metal utensils on a... You know, nonstick pan. Uh, it's pretty uplifting. I sent Monty. There was, I don't know, Matt, maybe they're listening, but I got an advertisement in Instagram about uh, pans that you can use metal utensils while cooking. And I sent it to Monty like, hey, do we need to upgrade? <laughs> Just last night, I sent that. Yeah, and I uh, uh, I think I've told you before my strategy were make sure I like all the photos from people I know. And then as a result... All the uh, celebrities I follow on Instagram get pushed down. Uh, well, there you go. Yeah. And uh, update that they're all still wearing far too many clothes. Except Lizzo. Lizzo seems to not be wearing much. Nope. And loving it. Which, eh, you know. And loving it. And The Rock. Yeah, I just, I'm just i catching up here. I got The Rock on here. The Rock and his uncomfortable looking muscles. <laughs> How's he comfortable inside there? What a burden they are. Yeah. What a burden they are. So, yeah, I'll catch up. I'll start scrolling and I'll catch up on uh, friends and family, Instagram. And then next thing I know, you know, I'm down to Justin Bieber or something. And it's like, man, Justin Bieber's still wearing a hoodie. Are we ever going to be done with this winter? No. <laughs> Although it's been nice. It's been nice recently. So Yeah, it has been. It has been really nice. And some sunshine. Don't want to jinx things, even though I don't think me personally saying anything is going to jinx how the weather works. Uh, yeah, I guess maybe you never know. Cover your bases, something. Cover your bases. Good thinking. Cover your bases. Shut your mouth about how nice it's been. <laughs> you shut your mouth. Of course, when it's around this time when all you can do is talk about the weather, why wouldn't you talk about, hey, it's been really nice lately? Hey, the weather The weather is a great thing to talk about. You can talk about the weather with friends. You can talk about weather with complete strangers, you know? Which makes me happy because 
maybe my house will be painted. It's been so cold. They haven't been able to paint the house. Okay. And we've kind of had to be like, okay, we might move into the house without it being painted. But if it warms up like this, we might, they might be able to paint the house. So kind of excited. If the warmth sticks for a while. Yeah. yeah. I feel like it's going to. I feel like it's supposed to be nice here the next week. So Yeah. See, now I've got this Instagram in front of me and I'm scrolling through it. Chrissy Teigen's cake that she's made. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Last night's chocolate sheet cake from book three. The frosting has that cool parentheses, icy, close parentheses, feeling of a crappy birthday party cake. As in delicious, know what I mean? Okay. Hard to explain, but man, we nailed it. Yeah, she's got the uh, star sprinkles on there. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Chrissy Teigen, Yum. also uh, quite a, uh, no earlier we were talking about our uh, our cooking abilities. Yeah, she is pretty fancy in the kitchen sometimes. She knows, Yeah, she, at the very least, she shows off how to make what she describes here as, uh, you know, a ice frosting that tastes like a crappy birthday party cake. Okay. 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 Yeah. I like Chrissy Teigen. I think she's funny. Yeah. She's really funny. Uh, John Legend, not as funny, but he's not bad. Pretty, pretty good singer songwriter. I mean, he's in, I like him on the voice. Pianist. Is he funny on the voice? Yes. I think the banter between the coaches are pretty funny. Okay. Gwen Stefani is out this season. Nick Jonas is in. So it's Kelly Clarkson, Blake Shelton, John Legend, and Nick Jonas. Okay. So I think it's going to be a good one. I've kind of found, I mean, I like Gwen Stefani in general, but I've found her kind of boring in the times I'd seen her on that show, which I haven't watched in a very long time. So maybe it was early on and she's developed. I don't, I'm not sure. Yeah. I, I would um, I would agree with you on that, except for this past season, which she won. I loved her her contestant that won. So I was really rooting for Gwen because I loved her her team. I don't. I just I like that the the voice is all about talent. And at the beginning, when they're doing auditions and they do like the sad stories, I have a hard time with that. I'm like, I just I just want to hear them sing. I don't. <laughs> Not that I'm such a jerk. I don't want to hear about you being homeless for two years or your dad died. That sounds so harsh, but it's like, I do not want to be this emotionally involved in the voice. I don't want to root for a person just because they've had a hard life. I want to root for a person because they can sing. So it's kind of similar, but not exactly similar to when you find a recipe for something and you get the anecdote about someone's grandmother. Yes, Matt, you know. It takes you... A good thousand words to get through. Got to scroll down until you see the list of ingredients. And maybe that's their journaling and their outlet that they need to say these things. But if you're just talking about banana bread, hit me with the recipe and the ingredients. Like, I'm sure part of their audience, you know, it connects with that stuff. Right. And they're like, well, I got to read all this person's recipes. Whereas in your case, you're just searching for a recipe, right? And you end up on any given page that might include or Correct. likely includes a story about Someone's grandmother. Correct. An autobiography, yeah. Is that typically the right framing? It's a grandmother? I think so. And I think I'm a magnet for those too. Like it's Pinterest. I'm just looking for something specific. And I like the picture that they did. So I'm clicking on that first. And I was like, oh, Lord. It's a dissertation. (laughs) It's a dissertation about their grandmother. Right. Right. So I scroll down and then I screenshot the ingredients in the uh, instructions and then there we go. Oh, you, so you screenshot? I do because so I feel like uh, sometimes if my phone, what is it called? Times out. And then you go back to Pinterest and it brings you back to the menu and then you have to go back and find and then you have to go back through the grandma recipe and then. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Right. Well, I was just saying that yeah, if you're on your phone, screenshotting is far easier than trying to do a uh, copy from this page and paste into a, a different app or whatever than it would be on a computer or something. And I don't always pin it because I don't know that I want to keep that recipe. So I screenshot. Oh, no, it's not that you're, you don't want other people to judge you for the things you're pinning or no. you don't care? It's, if I, yeah, if I like it, I might go back and pin it, but... A lot of times I'll look at the ingredients too. I don't even look at the, like the instructions. I'll look at the ingredients going, oh, that's a bunch of weird stuff. I'm not going to make that one. <laughs> that's fair. Those are things I don't have. I'm not going to do that one. That's a, that's a good way to screen a recipe. 
especially Matt, when you're just trying to create something like, you know, I've got ground beef, I've got cheddar cheese, I've got tortillas. One would say tacos, but I'm like, Hey, let's see what the internet can give me. They're like, no, that's 15 ingredients. That's too hard. I feel like there's a website that exists where you type in the ingredients you have and it comes up with mm-hmm. the, does that sound familiar to you? Yeah. Yeah. What's in my fridge or. Oh yeah, that's right. You had actually mentioned that one a while back. Yeah. That must be what I'm thinking of. Yeah. What's in my fridge? Type in the things you got. And it's like, here's something you can throw together. Throw together. Great. Thanks. Are you in uh, with the, you know, the move in date rapidly approaching? Uh, have you found yourself pretty, uh, what's the word? I'm constrained on the things you can cook right now? A little bit. Or have you had to change your, okay, I got to do more carry out type stuff or? <sighs> More carry out because I'm exhausted from packing. <laughs> no, uh, like last night we had a bunch of practices and so they didn't want, we had leftover spaghetti and they didn't want leftover spaghetti because they both had practice. So we did uh, turkey sandwiches and scrambled eggs. The spaghetti was going to be too heavy for practice? Is that yeah, okay. like it's just a, it's too filling, I guess, for sure. them. Me, yeah. I'm like, yeah, let's do spaghetti any day of the week. But tonight, I think I've got uh, I got some ground beef that I need to make tacos. But I have put a bunch of the spices away. Like I have, I've only got the spices that I essentially use, and the canned uh, canned food cupboard is all put away. And the, when I say canned food, like the only thing that I reach for really is Rotel and tomato sauce. So. <laughs> Um, all the beans are put away. All the beans are boxed up. But we've got, oh, we went to Sam's not too long ago. So I've got a bunch of shells and cheese, the little individual servings, and that can yeah make kids happy. And I've got a lot of shredded chicken and I've got a lot of, I've got taco shredded chicken and I've got regular shredded chicken. So I need to do something with the regular shredded chicken. Is the ground beef in such a condition that it wouldn't make sense to make hamburgers out of at this point? Is there a... No, I could make hamburgers. I just, it, okay. I, I'm, I was just curious. I, yeah, I haven't grilled. You know, I probably could, I haven't grilled, I don't usually grill during the winter. And if Monty's out of town, I might be kind of scared to grill. We do, I do baked cheeseburgers. We do like little sliders in the oven. Maybe that's what we'll do. Oh, okay. So the meat goes raw I, on mm-hmm. the bun? It's on a bun. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> the meat goes raw on a cookie sheet. Okay. I've never tried that. And then you bake it, and then you uh, yeah. take it out, and you drain the grease, and then you put it back in, and you put your cheese on it, and then, uh, then it's it almost looks like a like you fill the cookie sheet with the meat, like it's a square burger. Oh, it's a giant square burger. Yeah, or rectangle. Yeah. And then you cut it into sliders after that yeah huh. yeah that's good yeah you know what with the weather like it is this week i should set up the grill need to pick up ground beef though i don't have ground beef on hand have you ever done a burger in the skillet on the stove yes yeah i i've never done that or on a griddle griddle works yeah. good for that yeah griddle you can cook up a bunch of burgers if you wanted to see we have our griddle or is our it's out it's an outdoor griddle yeah. And great. when Monty makes burgers on that, oh my gosh, they're so good. I've wanted one of those. A big flat griddle for outside. Yep. It's fantastic. Yeah. But I'm excited because our new stove comes with a griddle. So I'm going to learn how to do things on the stove griddle style. The griddle embedded into the surface? Well, it's an accessory, I guess. You put it on top of your... Oh, okay. But it's your... a griddle that's designed with that stove top in mind? Yes. Yes. Hmm. Yeah, so I'm going to learn, Matt. I'm going to learn. I'm getting hungry. You know, this kind of transition moving could really, like if you're on a strict diet right now, it could really wreck that, right? A hundred percent. Because right now I'm in the just get to the house. I, I'm not filling my body with junk, but I'm not as strict on myself, I should say. I'm still fasting, but I have found I have leaned on Dr. Pepper a whole lot more in the last <laughs> week. Full strength Dr. Pepper? Full strength, Dr. Pepper. Dr. Pepper heavy. Yep. Whereas I would normally have like maybe one a week and maybe have it on a weekend. I've had like four in the last seven days. Pounding peppers. Oh, gosh. And they're so good. A lot of people could put down four in an hour, Kate. But 
Oh, no, I couldn't do that. That hurt. That, hurt. that would be bad. <laughs> that would hurt. Your body's not prepared for that, yeah? No. I say that, but at the same time, if you brought me a large one from Sonic with extra ice, I'd be like, yeah, it's going down. <laughs> we started buying the little Dr. Peppers as opposed to a can. We've bought the little minis, and that has helped. Yeah, the little squatty ones that are like six ounces or something like that. Yes. Eight, maybe. Yeah, that has helped. Yeah. That I'm not drinking a full one, but... I'm glad that's become a popular thing. Yeah. Before you were pretty much committing to needing to drink the entire can or suffer right. a flat beverage if you were to try to, I don't know, with a can, what would you do? Throw a saran wrap over it or something? Uh, Dump it and throw it away Just or recycle. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I can't do flat pop. But you know what I want? I want Sprite in the little cans. And Sam's doesn't sell Sprite in the little cans. Mm. Because, you know, when my when your tummy's upset, you don't want a whole can of Sprite. You just want, like, a little bit of Sprite so you could, like, get the bubbles, burp it up, feel better. But now it's like, oh, I've got this whole can of Sprite. Am I supposed to keep drinking? Mm. You can get... What, I think uh, you can, like, at Price Chopper or something, but we were at Sam's. I was curious, are you doing all your shopping at Sam's? Most of it. You're able to get pretty much everything. Yeah, I heard their eggs there are really good. They are. Okay. They are. We do eggs at Sam's or Aldi because Aldi is really cheap too. Yeah. For eggs. Well, I haven't been to Aldi in way too long. It's a good spot. I love that place. Yeah, it stopped being on my way home, you know, years ago. <laughs> it stopped. <laughs> stopped being on my way home. And I was like, an additional five minutes to get there? I don't think so. Oh, my gosh. And I really do like that at the grocery store on the way home from work. As opposed to spending weekend time on that. I and agree. At least with these hours, if I worked a uh, 8 to 5, uh, n- no thanks. I don't want to go to the grocery store right at 5. You know the mm-hmm. best time to go to the grocery store, which probably doesn't help you unless you want to start keeping your groceries at work, is 10 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Like on a weekday. That could work. Um, now that we're warming up, not so much. But I did used to follow a strategy of, oh, it's cold enough outside. I can throw perishables in this trunk and be fine. Yeah. Um, or have a, a cooler. I was going to say, we got used to driving long distances for groceries. So we always had like this collapsible, oh, yeah. insulated uh, cooler. Yeah, yeah. You'd mentioned that a while back. That, that is a good tip. I also have some really good bags that they keep cold things cold and hot things hot. What are they called? <laughs> insulated bag? Yeah, but yeah, I guess it's just called an insulated bag. I was thinking it had a different, like a... No, it's called a cold things, cold, hot things, hot bag. That's what it says on the bag. So that's what it's called, right? (laughs) (laughs) Rolls right off the tongue. Insulated. I was thinking there was something else, but no, you're right. Insulated bag. That's what we usually take to Aldi. Because, you know, you got to get... Do you like how I'm trying to say it correctly, Matt, by the way, instead of... That's what we take when we go to Aldi's. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I do. Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you about my roommate in college who used to say, uh, since we were talking about that restaurant, who used to say Chipotle's. Oh. Did I tell you about that? Yeah. No. It's like, oh, yeah, I'm going to go to Chipotle's. I'm like, that's not close to how that's pronounced. But okay, give me something. But Okay, I'll take a burrito. 